the, the, the real question is, there's some post hoc analysis out there, at least, uh, for some of these new drugs, uh, tilgrikizumab for one. Uh, what, is, what is that data like? Uh, what should be the impact of this data on, on treatment plans? What do we do here? Well, I think that one of the advantages of psoriasis is that there's a lot of good, high-quality level A studies, randomized placebo-controlled trials, which really can answer a lot of uh, questions precisely from an evidence-based medicine point of view. Uh, these other studies, some of the post hoc ones, and some that are a priori design, like we've done a series of placebo-controlled trials, we're going to effect some TNF inhibitors, prototherapy, uh, used to kinumab and, and second kinumab on cardiometabolic disease, uh, what happens to people's HDL function, what happens to their inflammation in the aorta based on uh, uh, PET scans. Uh, these are important things to be aware of, I think, in terms of where the field is going. Uh, but ultimately, patients care mainly about outcomes. You know, and we just don't have rigorous data yet to say that this treatment strategy is going to lead to better cardiovascular outcomes than this other treatment strategy. So, and the, so the, 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 the jury's out. The jury's right? still out, yeah. Do you have any, any, having looked at some of this data, do you have any preference for a drug? Is the, are they all sort of the same? Is, is one better? Is one cheaper? One more effective? One safer? Help me out here. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's no one drug that is better than all the others on every dimension yes. of, of, of drug quality. Mm -hmm. And so different ones in different situations. Right. And also patients are, you know, come in uh, all different histories and sizes and shapes and comorbidity profiles, right? So uh, someone comes in, they've already been on two TNF inhibitors and going to a third may not make sense if they haven't responded to their first two. And so you might want to go directly to a different mechanism of action. Is it fair to say that these new drugs are game changers perhaps in, in the treatment here in terms of treatment intervals and efficaciousness? Or efficacy. Uh, the first biologic that made a, just a dramatic impact on psoriasis, I think, was a Tanner set. Mm -hmm. And it was a game changer. I mean, it was just patients would come in at their first return visit going, oh my God, my life has changed. I, I, I didn't know how sick I was mm -hmm. until I took this medicine. I, mm -hmm. I had no energy before and didn't even know it. Now I'm on this. I can. I go, I play soccer with my kids, you, you know? like it's, one of those TV commercials. And I, I thought, said. I'm never going to see another quantum leap forward like that again. And then they came out, instead of with a one-week, uh, the every other week drug was even more effective in, yeah. within the TNF class. And I thought, okay, well, that's it. I'm not. Then they came out with an IL-1223 inhibitor that was every three months. And it was just as effective as the best of those. And it was safer and i thought oh okay right, and it. then the anti 17 drugs came out even more effective and are the newest ones is the il 23s a game changer compared to the ones that we had before i don't think so i mean, i so i actually think they are in that uh this is again a lifelong disease that patients have right and so what disease state are we able to chronic disease are we able to manage with one drug for the rest of their life I can't think of one, right? Most patients say diabetes, they go on to other therapies over time. In psoriasis, that's often the case for a good number of patients. And so uh, if we didn't have the 17s and 23s, I would, my patients would be in a lot of trouble right now. Because oh, because they would have failed the other they ones at some point. Yeah. Over time and and these absolutely. Kind of Again, we'll come back to money. Is there a difference in cost among the newer agents? And if so, what do you approve? Um, well, like I say, you, right now most plans will have some sort of a step therapy where they have to, if they have moderate to severe disease, so there's a, there's a few qualifiers in there, if they have moderate to severe disease, that they are likely to have to go through a couple of steps in order to get the newer products. And do you have a cost data analysis on the efficacy and safety of these new agents with comorbid conditions? psoriasis and, and metabolic syndrome? Uh, not that I'm aware of. That would be a level of information yeah. we don't have. So I, I will push back a little bit. I think as, as a community uh, and, and led by the AAD, uh, we're very much interested in seeing step therapy go away uh, because that does cause a lot of problems yeah. for our patients, a lot of overhead for our offices and what have you. So the way we think about it uh, is that, well, you know, I know this patient, in my opinion, needs a biologic. So then maybe the question is, well, what's the most cost effective one? And we, there we really need help from the payer because we, we have no insight into what the costs are. It's, com or it's completely opaque to us. No one lets us know. We don't know what there's discounting going on. We have no yeah. way of knowing. Although when they tell us this is the one we pay for, yeah, right. Yeah. I think we can safely assume that that's probably the most cost effective one <laughs> based on the particular contracting that that injured. And would often be acceptable in many cases, right? Unless it's an unusual circumstance for the patient not uh, be indicated for that drug. And, and 
so and, and you're really, for, for many plans, you're looking at adequate short-term efficacy versus long-term improvement in health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, there, there's, there, there are different perspectives that we need to acknowledge here.